تجربے خدا میں رضوی ہو اللہ سبحانہ و تعالی بائی ہز گریس اینڈ بائی ہز مسی ہیز بلیسڈ انسان ہیومنس ود بینگ ایکویل آن دا بیس آف ہیومینٹی بٹ آل ہیومنس ہیو ڈفرینٹ لیولس ایگزامپل وداؤٹ وداؤٹ کمپیریزن فار انڈرسٹینڈنگ آل دا نبیز آر ایکول ان نبوت But there are those amongst them who have been given greater excellence over others for understanding purpose. And the Imam of all the Nabis is Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So as humans, we are blessed because we are believers. Because we have Iman. But amongst the believers, there are levels. Amongst the believers, there are levels. There are those like sinful servants like myself, and beggars like myself and then there are those who got to sit at the sacred feet of Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam there are beggars like us and there's somebody who is called Hausa Azam Jilani there's a beggar like us and there's somebody that is called Khaja Khaja Gan Khaja Muhyiddin Chishti Ajmeri Sanjari Ratilan there's a beggar and sinful people like us and then you have that personality who will be leading the reins of the camel of the of the holy the, the holding the reins of the the holy uh, steed of the beloved rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam on maidan al-mahshar and entering jannah al-firdaus who hadrat bilal habshi radiyallahu ta'ala and then there is abu bakr siddiq radiyallahu anhu umar farooq radiyallahu anhu usman ghani radiyallahu anhu ali murtada radiyallahu but amongst them today we pay tribute to one of those special servants who has excelled by the command of allah who hadrat umar Al-Farooq radiyallahu anhu. Because today is the Yawm-e Shahadat. It's the day that Hazrat Umar Farooq left this dunya. Hazrat Umar Farooq radiyallahu anhu. Subhanallah. He is the critic. He is the critic who became an ashik. Hazrat Umar Farooq radiyallahu anhu is the critic who became an ashik. He is that personality who was one of the most critical about Islam. He was one of the most critical personalities about Islam and he was one of the biggest critics of Rasul-e-Pak in the days of Kufr. But then, Ijabat ka sehra, inayat ka jora, dulhan ban ke nikli duai Muhammad. Ijabat ka sehra, inayat ka jora, dulhan ban ke nikli duai Muhammad. Aur Ijabat ne jukkal gale se lagaya, but he naaz se jab duai Muhammad. And on one side, There is this critic, all his life he's been a critic of Islam and of Rasulullah Pak Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And then on one hand, you have the beloved Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam raises his hand and makes dua. And on this side, the beloved Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is making dua. On the other hand, Umar Farooq sword in hand, he's saying that today I'm going to end the chapter of Muhammad. Today I'm going to end the chapter of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He goes with the sword in his hand. His intention is to, Allah forbid, execute the beloved Rasul. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He goes with the sword in his hand. And on this side, on this side, the hand of Umar has a sword. And on that side, the hand of the Nabi is being raised in the court of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. And Hadrat Umar Radiallahu says, today, I'm going to end the chapter. Huh? That is why he's going. End the chapter of the history of Islam. End the chapter of Muhammad ibn Abdullah. But then he goes towards the court of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Or mere mahbub aankho ke tare. Kis jaga tera jalwa nahi hai. Yu to dekhe hasi mene lakho. Koi tum sa bhi dekha nahi hai. All the time Umar Farooq used to see Muhammad ibn Abdullah. But when the hands of the beloved Nabi were raised. Umar saw Muhammad Rasulullah. Umar Farooq saw Muhammad Rasulullah. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And when he enters the court of Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. As the Nabi has made dua for him. Then that critic becomes the ashi. That critic becomes the ashik by the dua of Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he thought that he was going to end in chapter, end the chapter. He was just starting a chapter. He thought he was going to end the chapter. He was just starting the chapter. The chapter of the Khalifa of Islam, Umar Farooq radiallahu alayhi wa Until Qayamat, more than 1400 years have passed already. And until Qayamat, the name of Hazrat Umar Farooq will be on the zuban of the Muslims. Why? Because he became that Ashik Rasul. That Ishq Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was in Umar Farooq radiallahu alayhi wa Shaitan used to change paths. 
Shaitan used to change his direction when he saw Hazrat Umar Farooq. It's not dar, so much of fear for Umar Farooq. But when Umar Farooq used to raise his eyes and look in the, at the Chahra Anwar of Rasul Pak, that Umar, that everybody feared his name, but when his eyes would be raised and he would look at the holy face of Rasul Pak, then tears would flow from his eyes. His heart became so soft and raqiq. Why? In the love of Rasulullah. I shared a message this morning with those that I share, usually share a message to. I'm going to read that message to you today. I'm going to read that because it is the word of Umar Farooq. And I'm going to end with that. That Look at what Umar Farooq, that Umar Farooq who the world trembled when they heard his name. That Umar Farooq who shaitan changed his path. That Umar Farooq, Allahu Akbar. But you know when that Umar Farooq with all his jalal, with the hibad that he had, with his awe inspiring personality, but that same Umar Farooq used to go at night in the house of a woman and clean her house, she was a paralyzed woman. He used to go and clean a house. Huh? He taught you how to serve those who deserve. He went and he used to clean a house. He used to do all the household chores. He used to sweep a house. Hazrat Talha says that I went one day and I asked, Oh, oh lady, who is this man? I see a man in the darkness of night that comes into your home. What does he come for? He said, I saw carefully. It was Umar. What does he come for? She says, he comes to serve me for I am not able to serve myself. She said, Talha, may your mother weep upon you. Become like him. Become like him. Do you know what he says? Hazrat Umar Farooq says, weigh your deeds before they are weighed. Weigh your amal. Weigh your deeds before they are weighed. When? On the day of Qiyamah on Mizan. Hazrat Umar Farooq says, weigh your deeds before they are weighed. On when? On the day of Qiyamah. And take account of yourself before the day when you will be held accountable. Take account of yourself before, weigh your deeds before your deeds will be weighed. And take account of yourself before the day when you will be account held accountable. He said, if you do this, then indeed it will be easier upon you compared to giving out accountability on the day of Qiyamah. Easier that you do it now than on that day. Change your lives. Who is saying this? Umar Farooq. Umar Farooq radiallahu ta'ala. He's saying that take accountability now. Because otherwise on the day of Qiyamah, he's up to dena he here. You have to give up. Nobody is going to be. I said this many times. Albir la yabla, wad dambu la yunsa, wad dayanu la yamut. I'mal ma shi'ta kama tadinu tudan. You eat every Friday. Albir la yabla. Your good deeds will not perish. Wad dambu la yunsa, and your sins will not be forgotten. Don't happen. Okay. Albir la yabla, wad dambu la yunsa, wad dayanu la yamut. The one who will recompense never dies. Allah is all existing. Do what you want. Do what you want. You will reap what you sow. What you do here, that is what Umar Farooq is telling us. He's saying, weigh your deeds before they are weighed. Hold yourself accountable before you are accountable there. Change, because Allah says in the Holy Quran, that day when all of you will be presented, and when none of you who wants to hide will be able to hide. Nobody will be able to hide from the hukum of Allah, from the command and the judgment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on that day. So Hazrat Umar Farooq, that grand, great Khalifa of Islam, look at what a beautiful message he gave. If all of us take that message, myself, you, if we take that message, and every day, if we weigh our deeds, in the scale of, in the spiritual scale, every day, if we hold ourselves accountable, what will you do? Why did he tell you weigh your deeds? Why did he give us this message? Why did he say weigh your deeds before they are weighed? Why did he say hold yourself accountable before you are held accountable? Why? Because when a servant does this, he'll make tawbah. When you do that, you'll make tawbah tun nasuha. Sincere tawbah. And when you make tawbah sincerely, Allah's rahmat will descend upon you. But to make tawbah also, he taught us in numerous rewites, you'll see how. Make tawbah to the one whose dua brought Umar to become Umar. <laughs> to the wasila of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa And Allah's mercy will descend upon you. <coughs> huh? What does the Quran say? And you have, you have, why, 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 if you have done injustice unto your souls, why is ulamu anfusuhum ja'uka? If you have done inf injustice unto your souls, then present yourself before Allah's Nabi. Present yourself before Allah's Nabi. Ask Allah's Nabi to repent, for, to, to, to seek intercession for you. To ask for your forgiveness. And inshallah you will find Allah to be most massive. Inshallah. And give you the crux because time is less. The gist of the, of the ayat. Think about it. So follow the way of the Sahaba Ikram. 
لو دا صحابہ اکرام ان شاء اللہ دنیا میں بھی کامیابی آخرت میں بھی کامیابی ہم گنے اینڈو دس کوئک نوٹ دعا فو آل دوز دیرہ ایل انہا کمیونٹی عبد الرشید بھائی فرم فینکس شرافت بھائی شرافت رعوف او یونس بھائی بابا فرم سپاکس رو جناب عبد الغفار عثمان آسیا حنیف and all the others were ill and we, we know and we don't know amongst Ahl Sunnah Allah grant all shifai kamil sayat ya ajil those that are passed away in Ahl Sunnah Allah exalt them in Jannah to Naeem now Huzur Muhaddi Sayyid Kabir reminded something a few months back people have been forgetting, forgetting about it I'm going to remind you now once a week try and do this at least once a week in your house choose a weekend because it's easy everybody's at home it's very easy to do I want you all to do this if you do this inshallah this pandemic will not give you this taklif as much as it's giving now and Allah willing it will leave also because where in Ghosi Sharif and other places where this has been done massive difference has happened okay now easy Surah Yasin you will recite what you will do you will recite Surah Yasin when you come to every Mubin how many Mubins there in Surah Yasin seven when you come to each Mubin you stop you stop and give one azan read Surah Yasin when you come to the first Mubin stop and give one azan Oh, if you have other adults in the house, one adult reads the Yasin once, then when he stops, the other one gives the azan. Like that, at seven mubins, you give seven azans in your house or in your community, wherever. Inshallah, if we do this and try and do it once a week in your home, if all of us make niyat and do this, we will see the difference before next Jummah. Inshallah, if we do it sincerely, we will definitely see the difference before next, before next Jummah. So don't forget, Surah Yasin, each mubin, at every mubin, one azan. And then you complete the mubin, last mubin, seventh mubin, and again, so seven azans, seven mubin, seven azans. Do this and then make dua for protection from the pandemic. Allah keep us with Iman. Let us leave this world with Iman. Wa ma'alina al-balaq. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.